Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, welcome to a new webinar from the Energy Delta Institute. Uh, my name is Leon Stille. I'm the general manager of the Energy Delta Institute, which is a business school. Uh, today we're going to talk about gas storage, and we have this webinar organized together with Gas Infrastructure Europe. Uh, so we'll uh, dive a little bit deeper into the gas storage uh, uh, yeah, facilities across Europe and what it means for uh, cross-cultural uh, and cross-sectorial uh, yeah, positive benefits from, uh, from gas storage with the electricity system. Uh, we have two speakers today, uh, Maria Spiraki from uh, the European Parliament. Uh, she will discuss a little bit more about the, the storage potential in the EU and uh, all the regulatory frameworks that are attached to that and to guarantee the security of supply and how to reach carbon neutrality in 2050. Uh, but we'll start with uh, Mr. Akos Kriston. He is the new CEO of uh, the Hungarian gas storage. I just learned from two days, uh, two days ago. So he's uh, fresh on the job, but he was already the uh, deputy CEO. So I'm sure he, uh, he knows exactly what he's talking about. So Akos, uh, um, can I ask you already to join in and switch on your camera and your uh, sound? And while, hello, yes, I can see you, I can hear you, that's good. Good afternoon, thank you. Just one second before you start is that uh, this is a GoToWebinar system. So if the people, the audience at home, if you have any questions for Akos or for me or for uh, Maria when she joins, uh, you can ask these questions through the, the GoToWebinar system. There's a chat box. I will see them here and I'll uh, ask them to, uh, to the, uh, the speakers. So Akos, thank you very much for joining us. No. And uh, I will uh, switch on the slides for you. So please go ahead. Okay, uh, all right. Sorry guys, it's the first time I'm doing a webinar, so <laughs> it's yes, a bit no diff uh, different than the, all the other stuff, but uh, follow uh, the slides and what is happening. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, my name is Akos Kriston, the CEO of the Hungarian Gas Ridge, and I'm representing now the uh, Gas Infrastructure Europe. And um, you just see the agenda, there will be not that many slides, so just uh, don't be afraid. Um, it will be about the value of storage, uh, some studies about the storage, a um, little bit about uh, hydro hydrogen storing, but let's begin with the uh, GIE. If we, if we can move uh, one slide, please. Um, so the gas infrastructure was established in, in, in 2005. Um, it basically represents the interests of, of uh, uh, the transmission system operators, the storage system operators, uh, and the uh, LNGs. Um, and GI focuses on the value created uh, from the assets uh, for customers and, uh, and users. Most of the uh, 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 companies within in, in, in the European countries uh, of these infrastructure uh, companies are represented in, in GI. Uh, can you please move on forward, please? Um, here is what uh, uh, the GIA is one arm, which is the Gas uh, Storage Europe, GSE. Uh, you see here what kind of uh, studies were carried out in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, basically, we were focusing and we were talk, work, working together with uh, either the uh, ENTOG or uh, Institute uh, throughout uh, Europe. Um, basically, we were focusing on, on, on the storage and, um, and the topic was quite often what happens if the, uh, uh, the storage uh, capacity throughout Europe or the overall storage capacity uh, would have been uh, decreased because quite often we hear uh, the criticism that uh, countries don't need that much uh, storage space. Um, in the next couple of slides, we will, or I will elaborate a bit on, on the results of these studies and why we think that uh, definitely uh, Europe needs the gas storages. So in, uh, in, in uh, 2017 and 18, there were some qualitative studies and also uh, in 18 and 19, some quantitative studies. <coughs> The ones uh, which uh, were the qualitative ones, they were, oh, can you just, sorry, move uh, one slide back, please? Okay, still here. Um, these were basically, the PERI study reflected the, the uh, 
gas storage market failures, meaning that uh, there is always a, how to say a security of supply aspect that the market will basically never finance for the storages. Uh, that's why uh, storages need some kind of uh, how to say um, legal intervention, let's say, or 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 regulatory support. Um, the qualitative, uh, sorry, the quantitative studied uh, have demonstrated that uh, flexibility in, in both uh, gas and electricity sectors uh, can be assessed and, and well understood to have a helicopter view. And uh, basically, I will show you in a couple of slides later that uh, based on, on several uh, uh, quantitative uh, methods it was shown that basically if we decrease the the uh, of if or if the capacity of overall gas storage volumes uh, would be decreased then in that case it would have a significant effect on the electricity system as well uh, as well as on the overall uh, uh, costs for the society okay if we move one slide please um, what you see here is that basically, uh, how to say, not a timeline, but a, a, a strategic view, um, what we in the GIE or GSE think about the role of storage. Currently, this is a, a, a let's say, a flexibility tool. It provides backup service for electricity generation, uh, meaning it's an insurance value. Um, and we, we, we try to give uh, services to the gas industry uh, to avoid the congestions in the gas grid, so this we call a, a system value. So we envisage that by let's say, 10 years later, so by 2030, uh, the gas storages will be en enabled for uh, energy, energy transaction, meaning that it will foster the transition towards a, a greener mix and uh, enable uh, European countries, uh, or countries actually, to start from uh, different low ways uh, in energy mix. Um, this would result in stronger supply of, of green gases, which are also satisfying uh, increasing requirement for storage of intermittent and, and variable uh, renewable uh, energies. And by 2050, uh, we think that the um, Storages will be driving force uh, or the key drivers for, for uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a green energy industry, uh, meaning that the presence of the storages will uh, enable to store renewable gases, and this will uh, result in, in a stronger supply of uh, renewable gases. And at the same time, um, uh, the, res the result will be the increasing ability to store um, the electricity from from the uh, intermittent renewable electricities. Um, basically, we think that uh, by that date, um, storages will be uh, uh, um, backing uh, very heavily the the. Uh, hydrogen storage and hydrogen industry as well. But now if we move on one slide, um, I try to show you what were or what are the results of the um, uh, studies that I was mentioning before. So in 2018, this was a study, what would um, be the result uh, if, uh, uh, if, if, uh, some of the working gas volumes would be decreased, meaning there would be less storage capacity in Europe. So if you look at the right uh, side of this, uh, uh, of this chart, you see the two week cold in winter and the peak day cold in winter. So what you can see in this, is, in this uh, uh, chart is that the various colors mean um, that compared to a current or reference scenario, there would be 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50 percent less uh, of uh, storage capacity uh, in Europe. And the chart itself means that uh, during winter, uh, 
how much percentage would be um, the volume uh, that uh, the less storage space would cost uh, the curtailment in, in electricity demand. So meaning uh, if there would be, let's say, a 30% of, of uh, decrease in the electricity, in the, sorry, in the uh, storage space, then uh, on a, on a uh, peak, um, a very, very, very cold uh, winter, uh, on a peak day, there would be something like 11% uh, percent, uh, curtailment in, uh, uh, in the electricity uh, uh, sorry, in the, in the gas demand. So, sorry, can I continue? Yes, of course. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, if, if you move on one slide, please. Um, the other, um, the other um, uh, study, the result of the other study of the Atlas, uh, there are, let's say, four segments. One is the main outcome, then the system value and price volatility and, and the insurance value. Uh, the main outcomes are that uh, here it was analyzed what happens if, uh, again, if there would be reduction of uh, gas storage uh, capacities and what kind of impacts it would have on the whole uh, energy system, meaning also the electricity system. Uh, so basically, uh, here you see the results uh, in a 10% decrease of uh, gas storage capacity, there will be extra costs in, in, uh, in, in OPEX, uh, uh, mainly around a billion euros per year, which means that you have to run basically, let's say, uh, instead of gas, uh, for example, on, 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 on coal fueled uh, plants, whereby obviously the OPEX is, uh, is higher uh, regarding uh, or based on the CO2 costs and so on and so forth. But it's more interesting when we talk about the, the uh, uh, decrease of capacity, storage capacity uh, over 10%, because if you look at, for example, at 30% uh, storage capacity reduction, it would be additional um, need of uh, of uh, electricity um, um, producing power plants and the capex of uh, plus uh, 55 billion euros and an extra opex as well so here what you have to understand what or what the key message is uh, um, besides the figures that uh, if there is a reduction or if there would be a reduction of storage space capacity in, in, in gas, that would have a significant impact also uh, for the society and also for the electricity uh, industry, mainly for the generation. Uh, can we move one slide, please? Just don't be afraid of these uh, nice price uh, curves. Here, what you have to understand is that um, the price curve here shows that uh, what would be the prices in, 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 in winter and what happens um, compared to the current scenario, which is the green uh, curve here. Um, and if you look at, for example, the dark blue curve, it means that compared to the green curve, it goes up. It means that if there's a 30% uh, uh, reduction of gas storage, then uh, Basically, the the uh, variability of, of power prices uh, would go up uh, or would basically double. So here, please just don't look at the curves themselves, but how the curves are related to each other, meaning that uh, um, the green is, is is basically the bottom line. And if you go, if you take out from the system more and more uh, gas storages or gas storage capacity, that would have significant impact on the on the winter uh, gas prices based on the on the modeling um, also uh, the last finding or let's say the last uh, the figures here um, is the how the insurance value of uh, power to gas uh, systems would be meaning um, if let's say at the current status uh, with the current uh, uh, volume of gas storage capacity, um, the the uh, impact of power to gas uh, 
generation of power to gas industry, uh, uh, it, it, it can decrease uh, the uh, deviation of, of prices from uh, from 12 to 8 euros per megawatt hours. Meaning, again, if we take out uh, capacity, gas storage capacity from the systems, it would be a lot more different for the PTG industry to reduce the electri electricity price very very variability too so overall um, the takeaway is that if there is less storage space storage space then also other uh, industries uh, in the in the energy um, industry uh, would have more costs basically and also there would be higher uh, costs for the whole um, society and now if we go on um, step forward please then here what you see is the project aquamarine which is basically uh, our project in hungary or let's say we would like to carry out this project um, and we have quite detailed uh, plans for it um, actually it, it exists it exists uh, now all, uh, only on, on on paper but we are very uh, keen on, on carrying this project out. It would mean that what we would do in one of our uh, uh, gas storage sites, um, we would basically from the uh, um, renewable electricity, we would, uh, using electrolyzing machines, we would produce hydrogen and oxygen. And uh, if you look at the uh, bottom at the upper left, upper right side, uh, this right, uh, uh, sorry, red rectangle, what we could do and for what we have uh, at the moment, uh, the infrastructure is that we can store the hydrogen and blend it to the uh, methane. Uh, we could store it in, in our um, porosus um, rocks. Uh, so basically in, in our gas storage, and what we can do with that is <clears throat> we can deliver the blended gas to uh, domestic customers through the uh, TSO's uh, facilities, or we can we can uh, deliver it to industrial customers directly, which are located not so far from our storage sites. Um, also, in the first phase, what we plan is is um, to investigate how this uh, this blended methane and, and hydrogen gas works uh, in our uh, methane fired, uh, so gas gas fired uh, 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 turbines. Um, hopefully, it will work out. If you want to, if you would like to uh, have a video on it, you can just uh, click on the uh, on, on the link uh, which is provided here. Um, hopefully, this project will be uh, successful. So, just keep your fingers crossed <laughs> for it. And uh, here you can see that also the members of the GIE, uh, the various members, they have various, uh, I wouldn't say similar, but uh, quite uh, quite uh, like uh, projects so in Austria, Germany, France, and also in other uh, countries. If you are interested in, in those ones, you can just visit the uh, GIE uh, LinkedIn site, and uh, you will have description and videos on also on these projects. Yeah um basically hopefully i have not uh, talked so much so we will have also some time for questions if you have but uh, yeah. i was thinking about uh, sharing these thoughts uh, with you on this webinar so thank you very much yeah. thank you very much thank you very much and the question is relating we okay. you already talked a little bit about it but uh, the hydrogen uh, how can we do you have to um, really change your your system if you want to store hydrogen compared to natural gas? Yeah. Uh, actually, this is something that I think everyone is investigating in, uh, I wouldn't say in the whole world, but uh, at least in, in Europe. So as far as yeah. I know, uh, well, you have to know that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not an engineer, but uh, an economist. But as far as I know, and, and, and I talked to some uh, uh, other companies who are doing this kind of things and also uh, talking to our engineers. So basically, for example, in Hungary, uh, uh, to a certain extent, uh, uh, let's say a couple of, a couple of 
percent uh, within the uh, within the methane. Uh, I think the current infrastructure, for example, for the TSOs is 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 okay. Uh, I heard also uh, last year at the uh, GIA conference that, for example, in Italy, there are some um, uh, uh, companies which are uh, provided by by uh, blended hydrogen, whereby the the uh, it was a ten percent uh, um, uh, hydrogen uh, ratio within the uh, within the blended methane hydrogen. Um, gas and uh, the infrastructure was okay. Um, to to my knowledge, for example, in Hungary, some infrastructure which is uh, which is uh, dated back to the before 1980s and and was built then. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the the metal itself and 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 the, and the parts itself they they are okay and and the hydrogen will not uh, you know just uh, um, go to the uh, air. But uh, on the other other side, so other, uh, for example, transmission system uh, components are, are not really ready for for the uh, blended methane uh, hydrogen uh, gas. So yeah. I think the the main the main question here is is uh, that we have to investigate it. I think also others investigate it, and and also when we we're talking about the the reservoir itself. Um, that's also a question here whether the hydrogen will just blend or or it will I don't know go into the or diffuse into the uh, I don't know, particles of the stone or how 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 will it uh, actually uh, yeah react uh, inside the reservoir you mean yeah. Yeah. So, yes so basically yeah. I think basically this is a question of investigation of all these um, uh, stuff so how the the, uh, the the metals and the parts will work together like with the hydrogen. And uh, obviously, it's a question of money, how much money you can spend on it. But one thing is clear. Um, we see that this is the future. So hydrogen is, is uh, that will come in some kind of form. Uh, so we, ha we have to investigate it. Uh, I think all the, the, the uh, infrastructure system operators. That's it, basically. So I'm not sure, basically, I'm not sure, but... Uh, I think everybody is is dealing with uh, investigating it. And are you are you talking uh, uh, to to these the different? Uh, you know, usually like electricity and the the gas is separate separate uh, companies or separate entities. Are you talking to everybody together? Is it an integrated approach for uh, electricity and gas storage together? Uh, yes and no. So I I think. Uh, on the investigating the the materials itself, it's not the electricity, obviously, I think. But otherwise, uh, yes, it's uh, as as said in the presentation, it's it's a combined energy system. So basically, also our approach in in, in our project is to basically let's say shave the peaks uh, when there let's say in Hungary there is a lot of sunshine, not so much wind, mm -hmm. but a lot of sunshine. When we had a when we have a lot of sunshine. Uh, obviously, we will have quite much uh, 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 electricity from from the PV parks, which are very much backed by the uh, Hungarian policymakers. So, in a couple of years, it is envisaged to be like uh, fivefold uh, of of the current uh, uh, installed PV capacity. So, in this mm -hmm. case, what we can do, or what uh, those ones who 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 deal with uh, um, hydrogen. Basically, uh, you can produce hydrogen at the time when there is a need for taking out uh, or, or how to say generate uh, uh, demand for electricity. So basically, running on electricity machines for for uh, uh, providing uh, or producing heat, hydrogen uh, is let's say a key, and uh, that's basically uh, the idea of. Uh, how the hydrogen production can help in balancing the the uh, energy system or the electricity system, and then obviously the energy can be stored uh, in the storage facility, and after that it can be added back to the system. Yeah, no, very clear. The uh, aquamarine project you talked about. What is the what is the capacity of that project in terms of hydrogen production? Do you know that? Approximately. Mm. Uh, at the moment, it's. Uh, Let's say it's. Uh, I cannot discuss it. Um, it's not a large scale. That's that's what I can I can tell. 
Good. There's no problem. With it. It's just a question from the audience. I think people are interested in this project. This project. Ah, okay. No, it's it's, it's not large scale, yeah. basically. No. I guess more of a test uh, test uh, setup. Hmm? More of a test. Yes. Yes. Kind of. So it's basically research. Quite a lot of research, and then uh, we are also in project to uh, a pilot project, and also we are in another project. Uh, of uh, sharing all this uh, knowledge, basically. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Akos, maybe, I don't know if you can answer this question, but there were some questions about Ukrainian gas storage and how that relates to European gas infrastructure. Is that something you can uh, can can shed a light on, or uh, is this a question for another person? <laughs> Sorry, I, I just I had to turn the microphone back. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't or I couldn't uh, comment much on uh, Ukrainian storages. Uh, obviously, what you see and everyone sees that uh, um, they are on a path to adapt all the European uh, regulation. Third energy package, uh, they made the uh, um, uh, split of the uh, um, um, big conglomerates. So there is a TSO, SSO uh, companies. Um, so they are taking over all the european uh, uh, rules let's say of the game um and obviously they have uh, a, a quite um, uh, big reservoir so uh, huge uh, capacity um but we, we actually don't really have more uh, information on that so yeah, okay. I, I, I actually, I wouldn't be confident to uh, to comment more on that. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I heard that uh, Maria. I think you're still you're back here, but then on audio only. Is that correct? Yes, it is okay now. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know why the camera is not working, but perhaps it's just good that you at least explain your perspective and uh, energy storage in Europe uh, a little bit uh, by voice. Yes. Well, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I think that next time maybe we can manage better the details. But uh, to start with, uh, I am uh, participating in this very interesting uh, debate as a shadow rapporteur of the of the INI report concerning the sto the energy storage uh, uh, in the European Parliament. And it is the very first time that we are trying to have a comprehensive European approach for energy storage. And I would like to focus on, on three elements on which my, my party, the European People's Party, but also finally the, the majority of, of the groups are focusing on in this report. The first one is the recognition of gas as a bridge technology and as a transitional fuel in meeting the 2030 targets. It is the importance of gas infrastructure for the transportation of renewable gases and hydrogen, which has been recognizing in this text. The second one is that we call on the Commission to develop a coherent and concrete strategy for hydrogen. In this report, we are underlining the, the high potential of hydrogen as a key enabler of energy system integration in order to reflect with a link of electricity and gas sector, and I think it is also important. In addition, we call on the Commission to develop clear standards for hydrogen, both for the gas green and tent user standards, which take into consideration each country's specificities. You know that the energy mix is a national competence, so it is important to take into account all uh, these details. We call also on the Commission to develop a strategy on energy storage based on the technology neutral approach with improved cross-border connections and coordination, with reduced and regulatory burdens for market entities. And uh, we trying to improve the access to capitals, to skills and raw materials for storage technologies. This report is a report which underlines that the transition to a climate neutral economy must not endanger security of supply or access to energy. And that's why the above mention on the on the role of glass as a transition fuel is of paramount importance. We call also the Commission to avoid and to prohibit in this regard double taxation related to energy storage projects when revising the energy taxation directive. And of course, we are very close with the industry in order to, to, to understand the, the, the problems that they are facing, especially to the European Battery Alliance. And we are trying to support the strategic action plan on batteries. 
Finally, we call for foster innovation, and these are the the, the main and good, uh, I think, uh, elements of of this report. But we are also lacking. We are also lacking in terms of uh, providing uh, calls for uh, increasing and uh, and uh, increasing the development of uh, CCS and CCU technology because. I think that it is one of the main enablers of uh, for the industry in order to facilitate the absorption of, of CO2 emissions in in the atmosphere. Uh, having said that, I would like to focus on the on the issue of uh, the transition from from gas to 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 X from gas to to hydrogen because I think that we have to to focus on the on the role of the gas infrastructure. As we all know, the existing infrastructures are a huge asset for the EU, and it is important to have the ability to upgrade it in order to to, to transport much more greater amounts of hydrogen uh, to, to the end users. In this regard, we are asking the Commission to upgrade the existing infrastructures because we have the, the opportunity to understand that if we finally decide to go ahead with with green gas, uh, and if we finally decide to go ahead with green gas and, and use it as such as pure green gas, uh, green green hydrogen, then we have to to have new infrastructure, and it is it is costly and it will take time. Uh, that's why we are we are asking for upgrading the existing infrastructures in order to have uh, uh, much more. Uh, uh, allow me to say renewable gas within the the, the pipelines. Uh, we have to reach 50 to 55 percent decarbonization by 2030 and we are we are waiting for the impact assessment but it means putting more investments up front in order to lower the overall cost during the lifetime of of the investments that uh, we will already we are already having and uh, it is important that the commission has made the uh, hydrogen as a central element of plants to decarbonize Europe's industry, especially sectors such as steel making, chemicals and heavy duty transport, which cannot easily switch to electricity. It is of course of paramount importance to launch a clean hydrogen alliance after the summer break, bridging, bringing together the companies, the governments, the research organization around the development of a hydrogen supply chain in Europe. Uh, I would like just to, to remind that uh, the the, the Gas Infrastructure Europe Association has already made uh, a kind of, uh, of uh, three-part proposals in order to, to understand how can we direct, uh, how can we provide direct shipments of hydrogen into Europe. And it is important to understand that the first choice is via pipeline or uh, via LNG or uh, via producing uh, hydrogen in, in, inside the EU. Uh, starting with the third option, the third option is to bring hydrogen generated outside the EU. But it is it is important to understand that uh, if we finally if we finally import this kind of uh, of uh, uh, hydrogen, then we have to bring it via LNG terminals uh, to the to the end users within EU. The the other options are the decarbonization uh, of the gas the terminals themselves. It is a, a also an expensive choice uh, and I think that it is important to to understand that uh, we could uh, start the we could start with this because uh, in this regard we could uh, upscale the economy of uh, of hydrogen and uh, one other option of course is to to input green gas such as biogas LNG or synthetic LNG directly into into the continent by using the existing terminals and it will the the decarbonization. You can understand that it will take time. Having said that, I would like just to to insist that we we have uh, uh, we have to 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 step up in terms of producing hydrogen, in terms of of uh, transporting the hydrogen, in terms of uh, of using hydrogen. And at the same time, it is important to understand that until then we have to use natural gas as a transition fuel, and we have to to at the same time to at the at the parallel way to upgrade the existing infrastructure because otherwise if we finally decide to go ahead to with uh, the so-called green gas without having in mind that we need the transitional fuel then the, we face the danger of security of supplies and we have we face the, the danger of having a kind of of security gap of, of energy security gap uh, in the next in the next years 
that's why it was an EPP approach, and I fully, I fully support it in, in the report that we have already mentioned. We insist on, on taking on board the the wording that the, the Green Deal is already, is already has adapted, and it is it is uh, saying that the, the 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 natural gas is the transition fuel, and natural gas must be used in uh, for transitional reasons. And uh, by concluding, I would like to say that it is time to to to, to take uh, into account that we have uh, two main issues uh, to overcome. The first one is the the role of, of natural gas in the existing infrastructure in the new regulation of taxonomy, and we have to to have uh, much more clarification uh, for for this issue. And the second one is the decision. The, the, the recent decision of the EAP, which uh, at the end of the 2021 uh, not allows to, 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 to further funding of, uh, of gas infrastructure, of natural gas infrastructure, uh, unless it, it will be used for, uh, for transporting the, uh, green gases. So uh, having said that, I'm at your disposal for, for any further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. We uh, we managed to get your picture at least here on the on the TV, so that's good. <laughs> so we know what we're talking about, who we're talking to. Um, like, thank you very much. So again, um, I have a couple of questions actually. <clears throat> you you mentioned uh, hydrogen and renewable gas, huh? so you can say that these are the same. But do you feel that um, if I talk about renewable gas, which is biogas, for example, green gas or synthetic green gas, uh, do you feel that is similar potential to hydrogen or is hydrogen better or more potential than these green gases according to the science the, the potential of hydrogen is huge so it's yeah. not comparable but i think that we have to to, to to have all the solutions on the table starting of course with hydrogen but uh, i i have already said that I, I would like just to, to to repeat and insist on this we have to to step to step up we have to step up because otherwise, uh, for creating a uh, regulated and uh, and stable hydrogen market, maybe we will need uh, more than five years. Yeah, yeah, because maybe that's also a question from the audience. But you already touched on that to a certain extent. But what is the main thing in regulatory terms that has to change? Uh, you feel to to really kick this off with the EU? Well, I think that we are waiting for, for the proposal of the Commission. And it is important to have it as soon as possible. I think that uh, we have a leak now. Uh, a lot of, of stakeholders are telling us that this, it is not something that it is satisfying them. But the, this, uh, this kind of proposal must be coherent, must be a proposal that uh, it, will, uh, it will create uh, something like uh, the, 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 the prospect of the, of, the, of the hydrogen sector and also this proposal is important because it will uh, kick off the the legislative uh, the legislative pro pro process in order to have a, a full package uh, for hydrogen. Uh, especially, I would like to to focus on on three issues that, according to my opinion, is important. The first one is that we have to have uh, a, a EU wide terminology, a, a definition on EU-wide terminology concerning hydrogen. We have to, we have to have a definition for green gas, green green hydrogen, which is extremely important, and we have to have also definitions for 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 the other for the other uh, uh, for the other green gases, uh, for the other uh, types of hydrogen, and for the other renewable gases. Second, mm -hmm. we have to establish uh, uh, the way that we have to to use the the CO2. Because uh, the, the 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 hydrogen alliance is is already asking for a, for a, a a currency in terms of uh, of uh, CO2. The third is how can we uh, have the revision of the develop of the deployment of for alternative fuels infrastructure, the so-called DAFI uh, DAFI regul the directive. And the, the fourth is how can we go ahead with the revision of the trans-European networks for energy, it is the 10 e regulation, and in order to support the development of, uh, of hydrogen and other renewable gas. Okay, very clear. Maybe uh, there's a question always about money. 
do you see that um, uh, also in relation to the, the, the stimulus packages that are coming up, eh, where, where people saying, okay, COVID-19 has, has, has some negative effects on the economy. Mm-hmm. We need to save that economy. Uh, perhaps we should do it green. Is there also an opportunity for, for gas storage, for hydrogen to, to step in? That yes, we can make indeed. additional uh, money from that? It's not only the money, it is the capacity that the EU will have. And I would like to focus on the on the value change that the EU has to develop in terms of using the, 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 the available funding coming from recovery fund. So it is important to, de- to develop as soon as possible the hydrogen value chain and also the, the battery value chain in order yeah. to, 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 to increase our sovereignty. At the same time, it is important to, to develop these to value chains in order to 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 export technology in terms of uh, of, of knowledge and uh, and uh, know-how. But uh, having said that, uh, you know that the hydrogen is the part of uh, of the strategy of the Green Deal, and it is important to 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 become pioneers in this in this regard. It is an opportunity to become pioneers in this regard by, of course, uh, and allow me to repeat it. Using first of all the existing gas infrastructure by up- upgrading them and not starting building new infrastructure, which is costly and it will cost also time. Yeah, so we basically go quick to the decarbonization. Yeah, use all available yeah. options that are on the table. So, firstly, you know, li- like you mentioned, natural gas being one of the sort of transition fuels, using the same infrastructure for green gas and for hydrogen in the future. Indeed, and I, I think that the, the case is now how can we go as fast as we can to the decarbonize economy by first leaving no one behind. It is, it is the issue that it is, it is of course, affects the, the regions that are dependent on coal. In, in Greece, we have two, West Macedonia and Megalopolis. And the second one is uh, how can we do it without, without hurting and without uh, creating further problems to, to our industry. Mm-hmm. I mean, without yeah. under, uh, undermining its competitiveness, etc. That's why we need impact assessment as soon as possible, sectorial impact assessments, and we have to go ahead by taking into account this deep impact assessment that we need. Yeah, so basically having all this infrastructure already here, we, all, we heard that from several other speakers on webinars that we already did, is basically a very good step for, for first step where you can have a, as a springboard, a stepping mm-hmm. stone, different uh, applications uh, and, and faster and more cost-effective decarbonization. Yes, and I think that one of the of the main issues that we have to to support is how can we enhance the the funding coming for 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 uh, research and innovation, because uh, mm-hmm. I think that Horizon Europe is not enough. And we have to use all the available financial instruments in order to have uh, a, a concrete results as soon as possible in terms of uh, of hydrogen and in terms of uh, of renewable gases and uh, green the economy as as a whole. And I mean that maybe it is it is time to to to, to do uh, something that it is it is written on the paper, but sometimes it doesn't work. It is time to to use the the additionality of the existing financial sources in order to have the the the, the biggest impact. I mean to use the not only Horizon Europe but also yeah. uh, part of uh, of MFF, uh, which is Horizon of Europe, of course, but other part of MFF and also available uh, financial instruments from EIB from from the national budget and from the private sector in order to, to succeed the uh, concrete results from, from research and innovation. Yeah, no, I think it's a very good point that you can use also that we can, as Europe, perhaps be a front runner in this technology and in this application also in gas storage that we can export to other countries, to other people that can, uh, can also use it. So that's a very, very nice point. And I hope uh, we can accelerate this process ma- massively uh, with, uh, with your uh, proposal. Yes, it is. It, the acceleration is the key. The acceleration is the key, and uh, uh, the case for us is not only the, the amount of money that we will use, and I think that it will be a huge amount of money after the the establishment of the recovery fund, but also the scope that we will use them. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, having said that, I think that uh, the, this this very very difficult period of pandemic and the consequence that it creates it is also creates a window of opportunity in order to transform our economy model 
and uh, mm -hmm. it is important to accelerate in terms of green deal and it is it is important to to increase our technology capacity by by focusing on on uh, on hydrogen and especially on, on green hydrogen and also on uh, on renewables uh, as we have already said yeah so you 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 at least are optimistic that we're not going to go back uh, to business as usual uh, once the pandemic has passed, uh, but that we use this opportunity, this crisis, for better uh, yeah, a, development. Uh, yeah. In a way, it's not allowed. I think that it, if we finally do it, it will be a, not a huge mistake. It will be a tragedy because we know that yeah. uh, we, the, the, the EU will borrow money from the markets and uh, with the EU will borrow a huge amount of money from the markets. So it is our responsibility for the next generation. That's why the, the title of this package is uh, Next Generation EU. Yeah, no, it's a very good point. So I hope, uh, well, I'm not that old yet. So uh, indeed, I'm, I'm very happy that you are uh, look, taking care of uh, my generation and gener generation after me. <laughs> and um, I uh, thank you very much for your uh, perspective on, uh, on this from the European Parliament side. Um, Akos, maybe you can come back also, then we can uh, close this session, because I have one more question for you. Yes. Uh, yes. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you, okay. I can hear you. There All was right. one more question uh, that is related to what I asked Maria as well, but is, uh, is in Hungary, are there any government plans to produce biogas uh, as well as hydrogen? Is it both or uh, just the one? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, uh, actually in the uh, national uh, energy and, and climate strategy, there's also a role for biogas. But uh, I think it's a lot. Uh, it's in terms of scale, it's a lot smaller than uh, than, for yeah. example, uh, uh, PVs. Uh, I mean, and solar. So uh, I think there is uh, uh, space for it, but. Uh, if you talk about scale, it's. Uh, I don't think it's. Uh, it would be a big scale, actually. No, it's good, not comparable. Okay. Well, guys, thank you very much, Akos and, uh, and Maria. Uh, luckily, Maria, we could get you uh, at least in this webinar. So I'll promise next time we do better. And um, <laughs> yeah. uh, again, thank you very much, and also for the audience. Uh, it was very nice to see a little bit of view from the GEI, of course, on energy gas storage and, and energy of gas storage in Europe, and then having the perspective more from European Parliament side and, uh, and in the, for the future. So uh, I think with that, uh, we'll close this session, and uh, I would like to thank you all very much for attending. Uh, if you have any more questions also from the audience, we can collect the questions and uh, give them to the, uh, the, uh, the speakers as well for answering. And you can review the recording also uh, uh, on our website and the website of the GIE. Uh, so thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay. Bye-bye.